You didn't know what was happening there, no, did you? No, not a clue, no. Cell phones ringing in the pockets of the dead. I'd like to start off with something cheerful. Cigars, putting cocoa butter on the cover of the scars. Maggie May and Captain Hook are walking down the aisle. The president saunters in his stride a crocodile. The Ayatollah swears he is not a pedophile. And the rights of man don't mean a damn here in the age of style. Hey, hey! Now that's a starter. Y- yeah, that's good. That's a starter. The undertone stuck his head. Stuck. Stuck. He stuck his head. Stuck. Stuck his head. 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 St
The undertone stuck his, his head, head around the door well, and said, do you know, songs with hey, hey, hey in it are generally good. And he's right. That's, a, that's very that observant. Hey, hey, hey in it. Very good. observant from the man. But who, there was a hey, hey, hey group. Who were the hey, 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 hey? Who uh, were the monkeys. Hey, hey, hey with the monkeys. No, only hey, hey with the monkeys. Then. No, I don't think it's hey, hey, hey. It's later, they graduated to three hey's. They originally started with hey, 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 hey with the monkeys. Hey, hey, we're always the monkeying man. around. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. That very observant from a man who wrote, I've got a cousin called Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> that was Willie Nile, by the way. That's from an album called Streets of New York, and the album is called, sorry, the track is called Cell Phones Ringing in the Pockets of the Dead, which is basically about 9 11. Who was looking. <clears throat> Who was looking at Inspector Morse yesterday? My ears at you. Ah! Sorry, it was me grabbing my ear there. I noticed that. Um, Someone was looking for old copies of, uh, a copy of uh, the old series of Morse featuring John, the late John Thaw. Uh, That's true. I have it some here. I have it here somewhere. Some here where? Well, I have it Mary here somewhere. Of course, you the wouldn't program. have taken it, but you no, wouldn't have taken note of it. Well, I didn't. Well, you were talking to the person we I know. I know. Well. But whilst, whilst I'm talking, so you have no time to take down details. The idea of the way it works is I talk to the people and you write down relevant facts. It seems simple. Don't see why you haven't got the knack of it yet. Anyway, listen. What do you know, think I am? I think you're a person. What do you call that? A, a, what, what, what do you call the person in the court? St stenographer. Defendant. No, the st <laughs> what do you call the person? Stenographer. Stenographer. Yeah. Well, you yeah. see, part of the stenography is part of your duty. Yeah. You know, sit and listen. Yeah, I would love to see one of those machines. Did you ever see one? I don't think they write anything at all. What do they I do? Think it's just, just pretend. Just yeah, it's like a little kind of a little like a little. It's fax a shorthand. Machine. It's shorthand. Shorthand. Yeah. Yeah. It's a typewriter for shorthand. Yeah, it's great. Um, anyway, a, a pedigree bull breeder writes to you, and he said, uh, "What I'm emailing about is this. Whilst listening to your last couple of shows on iPlayer yesterday in work, which I had missed because I was off on holidays, and he says, let's face it, I'm not going to listen to you in my own personal time. A little jibe there." I couldn't help but pick up Mr. Coyle worrying that his bin was going to blow over in the wind. I think I remember you talking about that. Oh, it blew over. Blew over. Well, you see, you anticipated that it was going to blow over, and yeah. then it blew over. Yeah. And after going on a bit, he comes out with the following statement. My wife and I would have to have went out and lifted the rubbish, apart from the grammatical error. I didn't say that. My wife and I had... What, what, say it again. My wife and I would have have to have went out and lifted no, the rubbish. No, no, no. He's, well, he's, I'm not arguing. No, no, I wouldn't say okay, that. Okay, okay, deny it. All I'm saying is I'm just reading my, what's here. I, I can't even repeat it. My wife and I would have had to have went out and... No, no. My wife and I, I would have have to have went out and lifted the rubbish. My wife and I would have had to have went out and... You can't even say that, you see. So he's, he's adding things to it, you see. He probably is, He's yes. adding to it. But my this wife is not... The grammatical element is not... and lifted the rubbish. You would imagine that the part of that sentence that he would have objected to would be the part where you said, I would have have to have went out and lifted the rubbish. But that's not the point he refers to. He refers to the intentional, he thinks, the implication. I'm sure that what he meant to say was me and my wife. He said, my wife and I... But you see, obviously you've been at the palace. Was it merely a slip of the tongue? Don't tell me he's trying to go all posh in his old age. Or maybe he's looking a job. I never on. said that. Well, well, I, I don't know. I'm just saying this is what the man says. Yeah. Yeah. And he goes on to say, uh, he said, when I was a teenager, this is a very, I don't know, you may have to close your ears because there's talk here of sperm. You know? Stop know. that. When I was a teenager, I got a pedigree Aberdeen Angus heifer for Christmas. Not every boy gets that. But the trouble all started when I tried getting the heifer pregnant. Or as he says... Him? He it, tried to? Well... He? Himself? Yeah, he got a biscuit tin. Uh, no, he wanted to try and get the heifer in calf. Now remember, he's a teenager. Apparently, now this is a little animal husbandry, and I apologise for any children who are listening, but this is the fact of life. This is nature, red in tooth and claw. God created it, so it can't be bad. A cow comes on heat once every three weeks, for sometimes a very short window, 12 hours maybe. So you need to be quick, as the gentleman in your programme last week was telling you. When we thought she was on heat, jumping on other animals and what not, we would send for the AI man. Do you know who that is? Yeah. That's the man from the Silver yeah. Circle. Yes. <laughs> the Tick Man. The Artificial Insemination Man. Man with a big long glove. Yes, and he would come and inseminate her with very expensive semen from a very expensive pedigree bull which I had got for my birthday. Not, not, But three weeks later, sure enough, she'd come into heat again, meaning she hadn't held, which is what people say when a bull is not pregnant. She hasn't held. Did you know that expression? Yeah, I have. 
If yeah. only I, I didn't know that expression. This is all new to me. Yes, you heard it before. Pardon? You heard it before on, a couple of weeks ago on the programme. What do you mean? That expression. Did I? Uh, the cow man said it. If only I had that man's chant to check out. He's talking about the gentleman he was on chanting. He knew when the bulls, uh, when the uh, the cows were in heat. He'd go, oh, 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 oh. Do you remember him? I do indeed. If only I had that man's chant to check if it was the right time to inseminate my heifer, I would have saved myself a fortune on semen and a lot of headache, which I'm about to tell you about. Because one of the times I got the heifer AI'd, that's what they say, I was sure she had held to the expensive bull whom who, who hadn't who hadn't sent inseminated her. But three weeks later I woke to find my heifer in a field with an unwanted visitor the bull from the field next door, who seemed to have no regard for the fence, he just jumped over and who seemed hell bent on getting my heifer pregnant the old fashioned way. I quickly ran out and separated the two and for the next nine months I would you do that? What? If a bull was How's your mother, is your father still working? With a heifer. Do you think you'd go out and separate it? I would not. You would not. No, no, no. This man did it. I kept I'd living in hope that my heifer wasn't calf to the pedigree bull I had AI'd, and not that mongrel of a neighbour's bull. So after nine months now, lo and behold, the heifer had a bull calf. At first, it seemed fine, and looked like it was the offspring of the expensive bull, but this was short-lived, as when the newborn calf turned around, it had a white tail. This may not sound at all bad, but pedigree Aberdeen Anguses are entirely black. So therefore my calf was not pedigree. But nonetheless, he was my first calf, so I had to make do with what I had. And I suppose if I hadn't have been for my mishap, I would never have inspired a clergyman who's a friend of my family to write a poem about my bull, which I have attached. A few details about the poem. I'm going to read it now in a moment. I live with my grand, who is called Charlie, on his farm, and I help him with my Uncle Jerry at the weekends. But when I was at university, they lent out my bull to local farmers without my knowledge. And on one of the farms, my bull fed, fell in a shed and hurt his leg. My granddad's a big fan of snuff, and I took it out with me one night to Claudie, where there was a young man who was bragging about how much cocaine he had taken the week before. So when I gave him some snuff, he rolled a ten-pound note and snorted it. He then had to leave the bar as the sneers and tears were blinding him. Some of the things in the poem are slightly over-exaggerated, as you may have realised. The poem is called The Bull from Donny Brewer. Do you mind if I read this? I don't mind at all. You don't care, do you? I, I don't. No. You don't care about poetry. A pedigree bull breeder from a place called Fochen Vale. Tell the people where Fochen Vale is. Fochen Vale is about, what, about, about two and a half miles from here, where we are. Is the subject, dearest reader, of this sorry, tragic tale. For although he was a student and a, bund- a budding engineer, he was not very prudent, as you're about to hear. His second name was Chambers, and he was a pleasant chap. If you ever met a lady, he politely doffed his cap. When he went to Katie Daly's in the town of Sweet Straban, he travelled up with Deary, and they took the transit van. His first love, though, was farming, and his life was very full. He bred a really charming ad, a frisky two-tone bull, who never served a heifer and did the job by half as speedy as a rocket. He always made a calf. The bull was very busy. And ever in demand, he could make a heifer dizzy. When he got the upper hand, the secret of his handiness with no exotic stuff, I'm told he got his handiness from snorting Charlie's snuff. But when young Chambers travelled to Jordanstown to learn, the pedigree got tired for his keep he had to earn. And Jerry and Granda Charlie took him on the rounds. There were times he serviced twenty. Each cost ninety pounds. Do the math. There were heifers from Dungannon, there were heifers from Armagh, from Achabrach and Claudia, and some from Mahara. He served a few from Swatra, and a wean from... Uh, a wean. A, a wean. That's oh. it, a wean. He served a few from Swatra, and a wean from near Drum Cern, and a heifer from the Largy, I think he gave a turn. He even crossed the border, but young Chambers did not know. The pair of crafty buckles had him working in Dunlow. The bull was doing nicely. He brought them lots of luck, till he did a job in Killywill, and there... Wouldn't you know it? Disaster struck. The farmer was O'Hara, McKinney, Coyle or Smith, but his slatted house was slippy and the poor bull lost his grip when the heifer started slipping with our friend upon her back and the pedigree romancer, his leg, an awful crack. When the students started asking how the bull had lost his leg, he met a wall of silence. Not a word was said, so he ruefully concluded that his pedigree now lacked the brake horsepower he needed to reach the heifer's back but he took the bull to Belfast 
to, to start a new career. He's working up in Stormont now. At least that's what I hear. He's advisor to the minister who deals with farmers' needs. I think it was our, our Martin who did the kindly deed. Now the lads in Dunny Brewer are thoroughly disgusted, though the bull's a civil servant financially. They're busted. But I'm told by trusty people they're working on a scam to sell their snuff to patrons who drink and dance in dance. If you ever go to Belfast, to the corridors of power, you will hear our politicians punching in their hours. But the one who works the hardest and whose day is always full is the pedigree from Derry, our three-legged, two-tone bull. Was that a great story? I thought it was too long. No. I liked it. I stopped listening to it. I know you have no patience. Mm. I was 13 when we packed up in the city And moved out west to a town in the country Everybody thought that we were so lucky But I wasn't all that sure Can you ever really take the city from the boy? Well, the first thing I missed was all the noise It was so damn quiet I found it hard to sleep at night Sisters, why would we have done without each other? We couldn't have won. We made good friends, and I still keep in touch today.
great record. That's called Bird in the Cage by a band called The Walls, of course, from the south of Ireland. Uh, do you know that's autobiographical? No, I like that group. Great. Uh, they were in here one time in a Friday in Belfast and they, uh, they uh, told me all about that song, which is uh, about their lives. Uh, if you listen to the words carefully, everything is, w- everything is truth. Everything is veracity. Did you see the programme last night on Ray McNally? Mm, no, no. I've never liked Ray McNally since I met his son, Ingus McNally. Did you know Angus McNally was uh, Ray McNally's son? No. He's a broadcaster in RTE. I didn't know that. There you are, you but see. But uh, uh, that shouldn't cloud your judgment. Yes, on if I father. told you what happened. It, it no, not the father. The father, no. no you but can't. See, anyone, well, well, I always... Well, you see, if you meet somebody and you don't like them all that much, yeah. you, you don't, it doesn't make you like their father more, does it? Yesterday I rushed home, as strange. I always... Excuse me? That was very strange. Know, D- D- gonna... Davey's on one, by the way. Yesterday I rushed home, as I always do, to listen to your fantastic show, says John Montgomery. I was sorely disappointed, as it has not been made on iPlayer available. And yet again states that the programme has been edited since transmission. That's the programme where Geordie was on celebrating his birthday. That's not all. <laughs> he must, Geordie must have said something. Hello, no, good morning. Didn't. No, he didn't. No, no that's Hello, unfair. George. I don't know. I'm just that's saying. That's unfair. That's unfair. I that's don't unfair. Know. You, you should, you should apologise immediately to Geordie. I don't apologise. I, mean, I apologise to no man. Do you not? To no man. But, you know, Geordie must have said something. I'm just speculating. Maybe perhaps he did say something. I don't know. Hello, Jared. Yeah. Hello, good morning. So sorry about that. There's a little bickering going on here of a That's professional okay. nature. You bicker with the, with the eyebrow boy. Um, well, you see, he, he needs reassuring every now and again. What can we do for you today? Are you still there? Sure. Yes, sorry. I am indeed, love. I thought I you indeed. pipped away there. <clears throat> um, I was watching a few films over, over the festive season, I met, and I was looking at the, the end credits. Yes. And you being a man of the world and having Chris Christopherson as your best friend. Indeed. Uh, what is a key grip? A key grip? A key grip? I don't know what a key grip is. Uh, it's like best boy. Well, uh, hey, that's exactly what I wrote down second was a best boy. And then a dolly grip? What does dolly that grip? Mean? No, I know what a dolly grip is. A dolly, cam- a, dolly a, dolly, a dolly camera is when you have a little railway line, like a thing, and the camera goes on it like a, like a little train and it goes round the scene so you're able to... Uh, Film uh, in oh, motion. Right, right, mate, right. Are you sure that's what a dolly is? A dolly, and that's is what a dolly, dolly is. Not yeah. a big, a big, a big arm camera and a big arm, the big, big long. Well, it might be that. Yeah. Is that not a dolly? No. Maybe that. See, all those things have become uh, obsolete now because of the steady cam. Steady cam does all that now. But there was a well, time. No, 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 it's just, it's just. There's when you dolly grip, movie. best boy. And, and best key grip. Key grip. What's best boy? Is best boy the electrician or something? I don't know. Is he there? These are. Uh, do you know what a foley artist is? No. A Foley artist is the fellow who puts on the sound after. You know, like sound effects, like... Oh. If you film a big guy walking down the street and there's no sound, yeah, the fellow goes in. Oh, Foley artist. And they call them Foley artists because they used to be based in Foley Street around the corner from the BBC in London. Oh, is that right? Oh, oh absolutely. Right. You see, these, oh, things, so these, th- these things are all, all... All these things are very historic in a way. No, man. Best boy, best boy, best and boy. key What's grip, best key grip. Yeah, know best, boy, key, best boy, I think best boy is something to do with the elect. Elec- uh, yes, I think he's the elect- 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 the best boy, <laughs> and uh, Patsy's the key grip, and, uh, and 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 Barney, Barney's the, the what's Barney? Barney's the foley no, artist. No, Barney looks after the foley. Barney's a dolly grip. Barney's a dolly grip. Barney's a dolly grip, dolly and uh, Fancy's the best boy. Where yes. is Fancy? Is he still on the planet Z at the minute? I don't know. He's been probed elsewhere. He's been probed. Thank you for pointing that out to us. I'm sure we'll have uh, lots of. Uh, uh, yes, if you can get a few wee responses, Jared, we'll, we'll f- appreciate it. We'll a find key out grip, for it. A best boy and a dolly grip. Dolly right, the key grip, grip best boy, and have you written those? Don't be writing them down. Dolly you must be interested. Grip. Best yeah, boy, dolly grip. I think grip. best boy is chief electrician. I, I think it's chief electrician. I, would, I, I don't think so. I think a best boy is maybe an assistant to the main actor. No, 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 no. It's not. It's no. something technical. Yeah. Best oh, boy. Yeah. Do you remember when? There used to be TV crews. Do you mm-hmm. remember there used to be five people? In it? Not so long ago because uh, people have slimmed down now because of the advances in technology with cameras and stuff. You, uh, you don't need lights now, really. There was a time when you needed a man to go around and put lights up. Yeah. And the job that I always wanted, remember, you know the job I'm talking about, the job I always wanted was the fellow who helps the guy put up the lights. And he would stand there. There'd be like a crew of maybe six people. I mean, if they came to interview you, Sean, about yeah. something that you knew if you killed somebody. Right. Oh, no, would he be the best boy, though? He'd be the best boy, or even the key grip. 
and they, they would six men would arrive and one yeah. man with the camera and he would just stand there like a king you see and everybody would be all around him and they'd do so things for him head book, yeah. So which boy yeah. do you want to be? Because I know the boy I want to be. Do you want Go to be on. the assistant cameraman? No, what, what boy do you want to be? I want to be the, the, the assistant to the guy who puts the lights up. Yeah, but what does he do, the assistant? He goes out of the car and gets a bulb. Well, now, uh, is Sean, he the Sean, same boy? Yes? Sean, I want, I want to be the dolly grip. What? You don't, don't even know, know what, what it, it is. is. <laughs> <He's>, uh, <laughs> See the way we turned on you simultaneously? <laughs> We turned on you uh, in in duet in a duet. No, I want to be the boy. Do you know the boy when the the director or I know the, the boy lifts the cable. No, the boy that changed the color lighting. The boy put out a big no the no, try, oh, yes. try green on that and he put a, a, a I think that's, that's, that's no I think that's the same. Can you hear we're talking here? <laughs> I, is that the same? Like, that's I'm the same guy. What What's he talking it? about? What's Will he? Why is he talking? Well, you get somebody to ring and tell me who the best grip is, the best boy in a dolly grip. That's already done. We're Have you no patience? No, but you're, you're, you're only surmising. We've moved amazing. on from that. You see, you'll find this out. People will ring in and tell us, and then we'll tell you probably after the news. Have a bit All of patience, right. will you? All right. All Have right. a bit of patience. Sorry, sorry. It's a new I'm, year. I'm sorry. I, I know. It's all right. Calm down. All, all the dolly is, grip is a technician trained to operate the camera dolly. That's but what, what I said. is the dolly? Dolly's the wee railway track. Are you sure? Yes. Well, I won't. You're a big star. You know these things. You've made documentaries. <laughs> Many movies. Yes. Happy to talk a lot of nonsense. Anyway, <laughs> I think the man that you're talking about who changes the slide is the yes. same man who helps the lighting man. Oh, I want that. Right. We, 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 we both want the I'll same job. The here very shortly. Uh, John, John, run out there and get us on 4B5. All right. All right, all right, Fonte. See you on the Barney, go out there and get us a uh, hundred watt uh, uh, green. Uh, 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 listen, we'll find that out for you. We have to go now because of the news. God okay. Bless you, man. God bless you and keep you. Goodbye. On 92 to 95 FM and 1341 medium wave, this is BBC Radio Ulster. BBC News at 11 o'clock with Sabrina Sweeney. The police believe an overnight fire that badly damaged commercial premises in Ballyclare was started deliberately. The blaze at Clare Farm Supplies in Park Street was discovered at around half past three this morning. The roof of the building has collapsed. Charlie McCauley of the Northern Ireland Fire Service says it took more than 40 of his colleagues several hours to put the fire out. During the course of firefighting it became um, found that the building was in a very dangerous condition and we requested uh, an aerial appliance, a high reach appliance, to, to come to us uh, so we could attack the fire from above. Um, fire uh, was surrounded in about uh, half an hour, uh, but it took us uh, until 10 o'clock before the last of fire appliances left the scene, uh, just to make sure that the fire was fully extinguished. David Cameron says the government is considering introducing new powers to prevent tax avoidance by big companies and wealthy individuals. The Prime Minister says a tougher approach is needed because large firms have what he called fancy corporate lawyers to reduce their tax bills. Scotland Yard has said it has no immediate plans to break up the specialist unit working on the Stephen Lawrence case. There have been suggestions it could be disbanded because of budget cuts. Two men were jailed for Stephen Lawrence's killing yesterday and a senior detective warned that others who were involved should not sleep easily in their beds. The BBC has learned that government plans to reduce the size of the House of Lords will be rejected by MPs and peers. Ministers want the upper chamber to have only 300 most elected members. A joint committee of MPs and peers wants at least 450. Well, it's time now to get the latest sports news with Grant Cameron. BBC Sport understands that an announcement on golf's Irish Open will be made at Royal Port Rush tomorrow. Killarney hosted last year's event, but a venue for this summer's tournament has not yet been revealed. Aston Villa are optimistic they'll complete the loan signing of Republic captain Robbie Keane from LA Galaxy in time for their next Premier League game against Everton on Saturday week. Coleraine have signed forward Paul Owens from Carrick Rangers, but showground skipper David Ogilby is ineligible for the Bandsiders Irish Cup fifth round tie on Saturday week after picking up a two-match suspension. A similar ban rules Cliftonville midfielder Ryan Catney out of the Reds' tie with Ards. And Derry City directors will meet tomorrow to appoint the club's new manager. And now with all the weather details, here's Angie Phillips. 
The highest winds are moving away, but it'll still be very windy at first, with the risk of some disruptive gusts of wind in excess of 50 miles per hour, especially when squally showers run through. The wind and showers will ease into the afternoon. It is generally a brighter day than yesterday, and it'll eventually end up drier too, with highs of around 8 Celsius. Mainly dry tonight, with winds continuing to ease. Overnight lows 3 or 4 degrees. BBC News. BBC Radio Ulster. Travel News. In West Belfast, Lanark Way remains closed between the Shankill Road and Springfield Road as the gates are not working, but in Ballyclare, Park Street has been reopened following this morning's fire. The weather has caused some disruptions on the roads with many closures in place because of fallen trees and flooding. Full details of closures are available on the trafficwatchni.com website under the Winter Service and Emergency News section. But in County Fermanagh, the Lockshore Road between Billick and Enniskillen has now been reopened. At the seaport, Stena sailings to and from Belfast have been delayed because of the weather and the Rathlin Ferry has been cancelled all day. And finally, flights at Belfast International Airport. The 5 to 11 flight from Heathrow is due at a quarter past 11 and at the George Best Belfast City Airport, the 12 o'clock flight from the Isle of Man has been delayed by half an hour. Gillian Moyner reporting. Travel News on BBC Radio Ulster. On Talkback with Wendy Austin today, new manager, new start, will Michael O'Neill's appointment mark a new relationship between nationalists and the Northern Ireland football team? Should terminally ill adults be helped to die if they want to? Should doctors be allowed to assist them? A report out today says yes. What's your view? And stop moaning and get on with it, part two. The man who got a job through Twitter tells us how. Also today, the Sinn Féin councillor who blames drug dealers for repeatedly attacking his North Belfast home and the court sitting in Mayo, which brings a whole new meaning to being called to the bar. Join the debate on Talk Back at 12. I just about to care. They're sitting down by a river in the swamps. They're sitting down on a log. One of them is kind of a big fella, another them is a... A little bit smaller, and he's got a long bib cap. And they sit there pondering on what they're gonna do for the night. And anything the big guy says on, the little guy's far because he digs him. He's cool. So it's cool. Roosevelt and Ivy Lee. Was that Ulster Scott? Is that Tony Joyt? Yeah. This is brilliant. I love it. The river was dark and muddy, and the moon was on the Chickens, no rose visit like his name. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So it tastes good. Yes, it would. I love my chicken.
shot He's been long gone Too long gone You know his name Now he's riding on the bullet train I have a dream, said the black man He's been long gone, too long gone. It's a crying shame. Now he's riding on the bullet train, riding on the bullet train, riding on the bullet train. He's riding on the bullet train. That's a great song. I play that often, maybe too often. Yeah, <clears throat> I apologise if you think so. It's called Bullet Train. It's by a band called Lost Dogs from an album called Scenic Roots. And I just think it's a great example of straightforward rock and roll. Before that, we had uh, Tony Joe White. Tony Joe White, talk like that, but the same bell still. I, I... Talk like that, but the same bell still. You see, be a bit of time ago, we say bye. I thought for years and years that Tony Joe White was black. I thought Tony Joe White was black, and he yep. looked in the cover of the album, and he was white. Uh, uh, he appeared cool. on the Johnny Cash show, I think it was, and Johnny Cash said, let me introduce my guest, Mr. Tony Joe White. And Tony Joe White came on, I said, it's wonder what Tony Joe White he is. Tony Joe White was so talented that he disappeared completely. Yeah. That was a song called Roosevelt and Ira Lee, Night of the Moccasin. 
the Moccasin Snake. That's from an album, uh, a triple album called the Tony Joe White Collection, which is very, very reasonable. Which came to me this morning. There's a man who's been waiting to talk to you for 24 hours. I'm going to do something that I've never done. for 24 hours. I'm going to do something that I've never done before. 24 to, hours? I know. This is an all-time record. Can you get, get, get over it? I can I'm, get over it. Notice how it doesn't ma- uh, affect me at all? You know, it, I'm going to play a song now, which I, in a moment, after I talk to the gentleman, I'm going to play a Christmas song. <laughs> do you know why I'm going to play a Christmas song? Well, me, you snigger. Uh, a gentleman asked me for a song called Mary Cunningham, The Christmas Ghost by Andy Rook. A man asked me for that before Christmas. And I remembered this as being a great, great record. Nobody knows anything about it. But it's one of the best Christmas records I think I've ever heard. Can I ask you something? I'm not finished yet. I looked high and low for this and I couldn't find it. So all during the Christmas period I was looking for this record and then yesterday I was fumbling at the bottom of a drawer and there it was. I said to myself, I'm not going to let this pass. I'm going to play this Christmas song, even though Christmas is past. I'm finished now. Well, I want to ask you, do you think Christmas, commercially, I'm talking, yes. Christmas and the New Year, commercially, mm-hmm. is sort of downgraded in people's estimation now? It's, it's regarded as an ordeal. Uh, but you think people, are, people aren't putting as much effort into people, especially this year, you didn't put a, a, an awful lot of effort into just, uh, would it be the you know cost of living or what? Everybody's it? getting it tight. Yeah, I know that. Also, it was far m- too much time off. There are people who had to sit in the house for nearly eight days. People who have never been in the house for eight days, whilst the wind and the sleet and the rain rattles around them, they can't even go out for a walk. They have to sit and talk to their wives for eight days. Apparently, over the Christmas what, period. What about wives having to talk to their husbands? Same thing. Uh, well, same thing. See, no, that, don't even, look, look at you picking holes in it. Yeah, this, no. It goes without saying. If you know two people sitting looking at one another for eight whole days and they can't go out because it's subarctic, and they can't go to the pictures because they've no money, and they can't go out for a drink because there are too many gobshites in the pubs, and they can't go out for a meal because it's too dear, and they have to sit and talk and they have watching TV. And but New Lee Year's Evans is on all the time. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. I'm talking about here. I don't know what it's like in the, uh, the the rest of Northern Ireland, but certainly it hadn't got the big impact that it had in years gone by. Well, you know, you're not going to see a great impact if you spent New Year's Eve sitting at home. I went out, and I have to say I had a great night New Year's Eve, full of jollity and gaiety, and pipes and music and wonderful, lovely things. And I thought to myself, this is a great New Year's Eve. You see, when you sit in the house, all you see is your TV, and you get depressed. That's what's wrong with you. you I didn't more. sit in the house. Where did you go? I told you where I was. Aye, but you didn't go anywhere. You went and sat to talk to men. You have to go out and grab women. Kiss them at 12 o'clock. That's what you need to do, whether they want to kiss you or not. You have to impose yourself upon them because it's the only time of the year you can grab them. But overall, can you can you just remove me and you from this conversation? You mean oh, not talk about us? Overall. Overall, do you not think it's it hasn't had the impact this year as it had in years gone by? Yeah, because people have no money. Yeah. So people don't go out at night now hardly at all. People don't go but to But do pubs. you not think particularly the new year has been... Should uh, look at Donegal. Donegal's a wasteland. There are pubs closing down there. The people don't go out in Donegal at all. Close, all the old boys are Donegal. They're closing here. No, but not at such a rate oh, as in Donegal. Half. Not no, half. No, it's worse in Donegal. You see, the things are bad here, but see, once you cross the border, people in Northern Ireland don't realise the here. south has fallen to pieces. It's not as bad here as it is down below. When was the last time you were deep in the heart of the Republic? When was the last time? I was down in Limerick a couple of weeks ago. I could, they're not even fixing the roads. You have to watch yourself when you're driving. There's big holes in the roads and they're not fixing them. I knew he was killed on a number of occasions. I know the manholes are sticking up. You know the, the, you know the manholes sticking up when they, when they retire the road, wherever yeah, it is? Yeah, yeah, and they, don't, yeah. they just leave them sticking up. And you go along and you go, boom! Amazing! Big craters. You know when the ice is there and the, and the crack appears in the road? They don't fix them anymore because they have no money to fix the roads. That's how bad it is down there. Every pub, you go into villages and the pubs it's are all closed. Off. You started that. You started off talking about Christmas Eve and New Year's Eve. Ah, now you've got me down in Limerick. Christmas Day in the workhouse. And all the lads were feeling merry. Who's on the line here? 26 hours now, is it? William. Good morning, William. I believe you've been on the phone for 24 hours. (laughs) That's a long time in any man's language. I'll tell you what happened. I came on the phone fairly late yesterday and you're all about Tommy the Cat. Yes. And I went on... <laughs> thank you. On. Yes, thank so you. Told me the phone me this morning. Yeah. And what you were talking about yesterday was first footing. And you said about ladies didn't first foot. Well, my sister 
and I were fairly dark, and we both, Bert and my father, used to get in our early teens to go out and first fruit. And yes. half the street were out because a lot of the ladies, red haired, blonde, or whatever, were coming from dances and had to stand outside their own doors because they weren't allowed in. That's right. I, I think Ginger is, is Ginger here today. Yes. Does Ginger know about this? Will we break it to her? I don't know if she does or not. Do you well, know about this? Well, Ginger. Um, oh yes. On New Year's Eve, uh, Ginger is red-haired, of course. So it's implied by that. That if you went to a person's house and you knocked on the door and you were the first person to answer, sorry, to knock on that person's door, and that person opened the door and saw you, they would ask you to leave because they wouldn't want you to come in because you're bad luck. Ginger head people aren't mm-hmm. wanted as first footers. Well, that's, that's a sad. What was what was the the, the piece of coal? There the piece of coal. We carried the piece of coal with us. The black-haired person. Yes, I had right. the dark hair. The black-haired person dark. was desirable. Yes, yes. Really but Italian-looking lady. Now uh, that's I think that goes back to our Galician past. It's actually a Scottish tradition. Well, same and thing. My father kept very much to the traditional Scottish tradition, in that everything in the house, decorations. Trees, everything had to be out before the new year came in. He didn't wait for the twelve days of Christmas. It seems everything had to be dumped. Seems draconian. Oh, seems that's the way. It, that's the way it is now. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And uh, my sister and I both had to run out on the hour of twelve and start going around first shooting people. And first bringing a piece of coal, went into the house, wished them a happy new year. They give us a drink of cordial or whatever. And a piece of cake, and that was the first fitting. So as I say, ladies did first fruit as well as the men. So unlike the lifestyle enjoyed by our own dear queen. So can I ask you this, uh, William? Yes. Had you a piece of coal for every house that you went into? A or? small piece of coal for every house. So you carried a bag of coal with you, basically, <laughs> a small <laughs> bag of coal. Bag. Um, we yeah. had, as I say, we were the, my sister's reddish hair. And another sister, fair blondish hair, and they weren't allowed the first fruit. It's great to see you spring to life, Sean. So what? Did, what did you, you see? You see, I'm yes, interested. So what? Did, spring you, into life. Do you mind, do you, Jerry? Do you Go mind? ahead. William, when you, would, when, when you went into the house, say you and your sister had you used to sort of sing, or did you shake no, hands you with spoke, everyone? You or? never spoke right away. You went and put the coal on the fire. Oh. And then you wished the people in the house a happy new year. Right. Uh, and and did, did did the people sort of give you a tanner or something like that? No, as I was say, you give you a drink of something. That was all. Which in our case, we were fairly young. Aye. Uh, a drink of cordial or something like that. And a That's how cake. It. Right. Okay. And then you left that but, house and went to the next aye. house. But where did the where did the 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 story of the red haired the unlucky woman? It you know, what, what's the story behind that? Also blondes, and blondes as well. And had everyone had to be dark. You had to be dark. But why? Why did they turn against the redhead and the blonde? What? What's the origin of that? It goes back quite a bit of time. Yeah, we don't know. But the same, my father kept very much. He wasn't Scottish, but I think one of his parents might have been, and it went back in years. Yeah, so we 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 all did that, didn't we? Yeah, yeah, we all. I think we'll just leave that for a moment. Uh, I think I know where this is going. That, that, that's the sort of that was the time they had that was the time they had the big the big nights and all William had you had you big nights in your house oh yes yes I had to have that yeah too, yes. that's right that's and the fiddler would sit in the corner and the egg and onion sandwiches more portrait for the woman in the bed it was all different then you made your own fun there was no TV or nothing it was great. It's been many long years since they found her alone in the night Next to a pile of old Christmas cards neatly stuck four inches high She had passed away Started to rise. A vow farewell letter to the people she loathed and despised. As the 
Christmas strikes. Ghost of all merry delights in making your heart jump with fright. Don't stray from the land. Turn on the light. For Mary is patiently waiting. She rules the night. Nothing will save you. Don't be alone, Christmas day. Christmas hour strikes Ghost of all merry delights Making your heart jump with fright Don't stray from
What'd you think of that? Hell of a song. That's a Christmas song. Yeah. It's called Mary Cunningham, The Christmas Ghost. That's by uh, Andy Ruck. That was recorded at Pine Grove Studio in Ballymena. A Northern Ireland production. That's good, isn't it? Hello? There's a call on one. Not impressed, really. Hello, good morning. Good morning, Jerry. I don't know why I bother playing this stuff. People here have cloth ears. <laughs> How are you? I'm not suggesting that you have, but nearly everybody else has. How no, are you I today? Cloth ears. No, I'm just ringing in. Uh, you were talking about redheads. Yes. Well, we go to Donegal every year for holidays. Yes. And my youngest daughter has red hair. Mm-hmm. And the fisherman in Greencastle told her that um, <laughs> a redhead is very bad luck. If you were on your, your fishing boat ready to take it out and a redhead come down the pier, you wouldn't take your boat out. That's a great way to get a day off, isn't it? Yeah, isn't pay, it? Pay some ginger to walk down there. Yeah. That's a terrible thing. I think it's very sad. Uh, ginger hair, people get a hard time, well, don't they? Well, the class is very bad luck. You know, it's, uh, I don't believe it. How does Emma feel about that, I wonder? Uh, Emma's outraged, she says. I'm sure she's outraged. Uh, and also we're told St. Patrick had a bad uh, day. He? Uh, yeah, he, he met a redhead woman and he had a very bad day the following day. Yeah. Whatever, whatever the story's behind that. But maybe the origin of the whole thing. You see, yeah. So. Well, that's, that's the fisherman told her. You mm. know, not the great you be, Jerry, right? Bye, bye, bye. Hugh. What? Hugh's, Hugh's, <laughs> Hugh's in Spain listening to you. He's on two. Yes. Oh, is he? It was yes. very, but hell, good morning, Hugh. Hello, hello. No need to shout. Uh, what well, uh, about in Spain are you? I'm in Murcia. Murcia, M-U-R-C-I-A. Uh-huh. That's not the way it's pronounced, Murcia. Uh-huh. So tell me, what's the weather like there? Oh, beautiful. It's uh, 25 in the shade and, and 35 in the sun. 35? Oh. And Murcia, in, in January the 4th or 5th, whatever it is? That's, yeah. That's extreme temperature for January in Spain. Uh, Isn't it? I mean, there's, the weather's not usually like that at this time of the year in Spain. Yeah. Well, what I was phoning you for was, have you ever heard a song Hello? That <laughs> called The Fah Side? I have indeed, yes. Eh? I haven't, yes, I have. Uh, it seems uh, to be a very bad line. It's, it's all right, it's the BBC way. Uh, you can hear the presenter, but not the people who are on the other end. Uh, they don't let you hear us. Can you hear me okay? Aye, uh, aye. Yeah. No, uh, you've been living there for... Nine years. Excuse is me. Here. Sorry, yeah, I. Yeah, nine years. Here uh, now. Get, get the t- let's talk about. He's not listening to me. I, I spoke to you before. Yes, and how long uh, have you been? When we lived in England. Nine years. Is that yeah. what? Where about? Where about in England did you live? Uh, a wee place to call Exton in England. I yes. We lived in Lancashire. And did you retire to Spain? Was that the way it worked out? Yeah. Good. And you've been in Murcia since. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Would you recommend it to people? Uh, oh, very friendly people. Yes. Listen, well, uh, well, tell me this and tell me no more. Uh, is it is it very expensive to buy property out there now because nobody has any money and everybody's selling everything? Is it very... Oh, yes, you get a, a house here now, nearly half price. You see? What are we doing? What are we doing here? Uh, hey? What are we well, doing What about here? the cost of living, Hugh? What about the cost of living, Hugh? Oh, <laughs> very cheap. Very cheap. What are we doing here? 25 uh, degrees, uh, we're sitting here and got big socks and everything on us. <laughs> and the big winds howling around us and darkness and greyness and the wind lashing the sea, pounding at our doors. And well, can, I, can, can, I ask, can you hear me talking here? Yeah, ask yeah. you, what does he do all day? How does he go through the day? Uh, what do you do all day? Go ask him again. Uh, what do you do all day, Hugh? Oh, just go down the beach and, and uh, you know, just... Uh, we're quite close to Port of Matheron. Yes, yes. You know, and you can go in down there and have a coffee. Mm. You know. Yeah. But is it not a long day, Hugh? No, no. You <laughs> always find something to do. Yes, it's okay. You know, I, but I, I, would have, I would have no trouble. Just, you're quite you just an think intellectual, about Mr. Coyle. What? I'm saying Mr. Coyle is quite an intellectual. The blind must be really bad then. <laughs> because... Uh, uh, he listens to Judge Judy, and so do I. Yes. Ah, but the worst thing is when you watch it. <laughs> That's the worst thing. <laughs> but listen, uh, where I, I are you know originally I, from? Well, you, can you, you can, so what do you do? What do you? What do you call this show? I know, but you're not. Your show doesn't start at three o'clock. You, you, just you, shut up. Will you're you? not interested in Hugh. I am. No, I'm talking. I'm not interested. I in want you. to retire to Spain. No, but you wouldn't. You, what could you do there? I just want to ask you, where's you originally from? People aren't playing snooker. I, I was originally from Ardmore. 
There you are. Ardmore, just outside of Derry Stroke, London Derry. Ah. And well, see, I think you do the right thing. You see, a lot of people say they couldn't live in Spain because they'd well, be bored. I left there when in nineteen and forty nine and never run back. Really? Well, you did okay. You're yeah. sitting in Spain in the sun, and we're sitting here foundered. So yeah. you, I think maybe perhaps uh, the jury would come out in your favour and would yeah. say that you made the right decision. Uh, no, I, I would never. I would have no trouble in Spain. I don't care. I can spend whole days doing nothing. Are you, are you there on your own here? Have you, uh, no, your no, family? I see you. So your wife's there. Uh, Even better. Any? Yeah. Uh, have you got any other family at all here? Oh well, yeah, we've got uh, uh, my family. Like mm-hmm. hard more. Yeah, and do, do they visit you? Do they visit you every now and again? That kind of thing. Come out and no, see you. No, they don't bother. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the modern way, yeah. isn't it? My son comes over. He lives in Largs in Scotland. Uh huh. Well, he comes over, does he? Oh. Uh, where Where is he from? Larg. Uh huh. Is that where Is that where Robinson Crusoe was from? Uh, yeah. That's right. Oh, that's right. Uh, uh, Alexander Selkirk. That's where he was from. <laughs> you know, it's Nairshire. Yes, that's where Alexander Selkirk was from, and his yeah. little house. His, his little house is still there, apparently. Huh? And he, he built a little house up in the hill that reminded him of uh, Juan, uh, island of Juan Fernandez, uh, which is now uh, Alex- uh, Robinson Crusoe Island off the coast of Chile, I think it is. He was the, the, the fellow who was the model for Robinson Crusoe. What's an interesting guy. I read lots of books about him. And he, he, he could run like a gazelle. He was there for four years. See, you're pretty Hugh. You've forgot, you forgotten all about Hugh. Well, he's not Hugh. listening to me either. Yeah, but you're not, well. you're not asking Hugh. He doesn't want to be asked anything. Like, don't you, you just, you just Hugh's wonder. looking for the lyrics of a song. We've got them for him. Well, why don't you just tell him that? Hugh, we've got you the words for that song. Have you? Yes. <laughs> He's an will intellectual. Post, will you post it over to me? We shall. He will not. Yeah. Will I'll, not. I'll give the girl my G- address. G- give Emma your address and we'll, we'll, we'll forward it. Hey, are, you, are you on email? Are you, are you on email? <laughs> Are you no, on email? No. Oh, you're funny. Reece. I don't know anything about computers. You know nothing about that. We can't. Are you using on email? Uh, listen. Oh no, no email. <laughs> I'm an intellectual. <laughs> I'm an intellectual. Tell me what Usen's address is. I never said Usen's. <laughs> wee shite. Don't see, be calling me a wee shite. You're a hateful wee man the day, so you are. So here he's calling you Hugh. You. Uh. I'm not calling you Hugh. <laughs> I'm calling that wee man in there. Shite in there. Right, Hugh, listen, enjoy yourself and I hope you have a lovely day and I hope you have many more days to come like that. Hugh, yeah. would you like would you like Anderson to visit you for a couple of weeks? No, you, you've already <laughs> no, booked no, him. No, not. no, you wouldn't want him, but you're like me, wouldn't you? He'll be there in June. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll be there next week. <laughs> my, sister call, my sister called you an old cod. <laughs> ah, you. Uh, no, you're an old cod, Anderson. <laughs> don't, don't call me after a well-known breed of fish. Right, go away then. Go away. I hope, hope you yeah. trip. And get, hope you get sunburned today. <laughs> it's been many long years since. That's the same track again, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. I know, well, may you laugh. to say I come home in the morning feeling the same way I'm nothing but tired just tired and bored with myself hey there honey I could use a little help you can't start a fire can't start a fire without a spark this gun's for iron even if we're just dancing in the dark The message keeps getting clearer Radio's on and I'm moving round my place I check my look in the mirror Wanna change my clothes, my hair 
on my face, I ain't getting nowhere. Just living in a dump like this, there's something happening somewhere. Honey, I just know there is. You can't start a fire, can't start a fire without a spark. This gun's for hire, even if we're just dancing in the dark. I sit around getting older If there's a joke out there The joke's on me I check the world off my shoulders Hey baby, the laugh's on me Stuck in Maggie's England They'll be carving you up all right They say you've got to stay hungry Well, I'm just about starving tonight Working for the grocer's daughter I just can't feel Feel proud of myself. We came like lambs to the slaughter. Now we're just stuck upon a shelf. You won't start a fire. Won't start a fire without a spark. This gun's for hire. Even if we're just dancing in the dark, can't start a fire. Sitting crying with a broken heart. This gun's for hire. Even if we're just dancing in the dark That's an appropriate song on the eve of the release of the new Maggie Thatcher movie featuring Meryl Streep Which apparently is just brilliant Apparently they're quite hard on Margaret I don't I didn't think that was possible don't waste your life, Claire. Don't waste your life, Claire. Don't waste the things that you might do. And I love you so. Don't waste your bus fare. Don't waste your bus fare. Don't waste the places you might go. And I want you now. There's a culture. your life clear don't waste the things that you might do and i love you so don't waste your bus fare don't waste your bus fare don't waste the places you might go and i want you now there's a cold chill your bus fare, don't waste the places you might go, and I want you now, there's a culture in my heart, there's a culture in my heart.
That's Ian Jury's son. His name is Baxter Jury. That's a song called uh, Claire. And before that, now, I can't remember the name of the guy who sang that Dancing in the Dark, a northern guy, obviously a fiddler uh, singer. I can't remember his name because the piece of uh, music I have here doesn't have any details on him. But I know the guy's name, but I can't remember. Anybody who knows his name, would you let me know? What's the song called? What's, well, it's called good. Dancing in the Dark. What's Bruce Springsteen. Can't can stop the fire. Can we Dancing check Dancing in the, in the Dark, dark Emma? We'll, 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 I don't um, think you'll find we'll that We'll get there. it on the jitbox. I don't think so. We'll, no, we'll get it on the jitbox. I'm telling you now. You won't. All right, then. What's your bet? We're going to check. I know, but what do, you th- do you think you'll find it? Well, you never know. I uh, say no. Well, you know, this is, this is what we do here. I know. <laughs> well, I've never seen you doing it before. <laughs> we we'll check these things out for you. All right, after the program is over. You never even asked you if he spoke Spanish. I don't care. I know. Well, and, and, and red-headed people, by the way, are not regarded as bad luck. They're, ga- they're regarded as a warning towards pending bad luck. It's well, a, that's nearly the same no, thing, it is isn't not. it? It's a warning. So, okay, if, if a red-haired person comes along, there's going to be bad luck coming to your house. Uh, and they're saying... But the, it's not the, bad luck. If the red-haired person bad comes. luck on its way. Well, that's the be same thing, isn't it? therefore prepared. In other words, the red-haired person is telling you it's bad luck, but why don't they let them in and tell them, ask them what the bad luck is? Cheers, boys, what's that bad luck you're talking about But you there? could be sitting here ready, waiting for the bad luck to come in. Well, she's in already. Oh, it's, you're very she's, nasty. She's there. You are a nasty piece of work today. Rather than resort to forced child labour, says Michelle, would it not be a better idea to pay your local coal man to first foot every house? And it wouldn't matter if he was ginger or blonde because his hair would be black anyway. I've never seen a clean coal man in my life. There's a good idea to get round the first footing thing. Uh, a gentleman writes to me, apropos your music on the subject of the artificial insemination man, the common term in my area, um, the common term in my area of rural dairy for an officer of the bovine insemination service was the bull man. Here come the bull man. When a cow came on heat, she would be housed and a phone call made to the bull man. Then a bucket of clean water was fetched for any necessary ablutions. Before the bull man would arrive, usually in great haste and sounding his car horn, later women entered the service, but they encountered some customer resistance from farmers for a few years. One of our elderly neighbours coined the phrase, a woman bull man. <laughs> and this moniker endured for years. Uh, there's a woman bull man coming. Do you remember the thing about, there was a joke about that. No, we don't want to know. I know. I, I know where you're going. That's about a nail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You don't. I know. I knew exactly where you were going. I knew that. This fella what? had a. This fella had a heifer. You see, and he, he, he called. He called the woman the, bull man. The, the, pay, he, call, he called the bull man. Pauline's on one. He called the bull man, and he said, "Listen, I need a man come, to come down and and not officially inseminate this bull. So what do you need? So you need a you need a, a, a bucket of water, uh, plenty of towels, and a nail. And he said, "What do you mean a nail? He said, hang it up in the battle a name on the wall." Uh, so what's the nail for? Is it to hang me trousers on? <laughs> you don't like that kind of stuff. Oh, incidentally, speaking of artificial insemination, the man says to me, I believe that I heard this show before. Have I? Have you told the story about the bull before? I have, actually. But what I did was I told, I had a little note from this gentleman who sent me the poem. I, I, I read the note and then I read the poem separately on another day. So I just said, do the two of them together because I thought that was good. And here's something apropos, everything entirely different. What about Pauline? Oh, you're so hateful today. I've not been ruined hit- me. Why have I been hateful today? Every time I start to cook, you stop me. People are complaining about that, you know. They are not. I'm they tell- are complaining no, about you. they are you, not. You tell, stopping me telling stories. Pauline's waiting me, eight interviewing minutes. people about stupid things. Eight minutes, Pauline's waiting on you. Pauline. 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 Where is she? Well, she's on one. Well, she's not speaking. Well, she must have passed Hello. Out. Pauline, sorry about that. Sorry for keeping you waiting. Yes, sir. You're being hateful today. I know. <laughs> I was all right when I started. But life turned me this way. <laughs> I know that feeling. <laughs> I was all right before I started. Jerry. Yes. I need your help. Okay. Now, I have lost a wee dog, and I know you're a great dog lover. So I am I know indeed. you can help me out with this. Yes. She is a wee Yorkshire Terrier by the name of Katie. Right. And now, I opened the door foolishly on New Year's Eve and she did a runner. Yeah. Uh-huh. There was fireworks and she did a runner. Yes. Now, she has been spotted. And at this point, may I point out, at this point, I have a feeling somebody has lifted her. So I am appealing to your listeners 
that if they have her, to ring the wee phone number on her neck, round her collar, on her collar. Yes. But she has been spotted at the Grange. I know you won't know where that is. The Grange in uh, near the Moy. Yes. And also near Park and Noor Forest Park. Uh huh. Now we don't know if the dogs are her, but we've had spottings of dogs similar to her. What kind of a dog is so it again? Just, just. It's a wee Yorkshire Terrier. Okay. It's a very small dog. She's grey and tan, and she's quite a timid wee dog. Yes. So you know you might have a bit of bother catching her. Okay. But even if they spot her, if they could just, I don't know, ring the show. And I just want to know where she is. Okay, then. She's like, well, she's a wee friend here, a wee boyfriend at home called Charlie. Uh, is, he, is he a wee Yorkshire um, Terrier too? Yes, and he, he they're lost without each other. I don't like so, it when they mix the breeds. No, that's okay. <laughs> so that's that's the Grange, and what else? Park and Ore Forest Park. Park and Ore Forest Park and the Grange. Is that, right, okay. Is, are they far apart? Uh, are they far apart? Oh, well, they are a fair bit apart, Jerry. Yeah. They're about, uh, about six or eight miles apart. Well, if it's the same dog, it must be it must be covering some nuts. Well, they say that a dog will, car- will cover a ground. It'll just keep moving. Mm. So, I, I don't know. I, I don't be- know. I'm just appealing. If anybody has her, please ring the show, and I will not be cross. I just want her back. Okay. Anyone just who- want her back. Anyone who sees that wee dog, keep an eye out for it if you're out for a walk today. Keep moving. Right. That's been my motto this last few years. <laughs> All right, we hope you get the wee dog. Right, All right, Jerry, then. Keep doing a good job. Thank Love you. The show. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye. Dear Jerry, my what? You see this? You, you, what is the matter with you today? I just I'm fed up being interrupted. I, you know, but people are ringing your program. I don't care. You're interrupting me. Jad wants you in too. You're making me nervous every time I speak. I, I go. <laughs> it's terrible. Leave me alone. My 14-year-old son volunteered to help out in his grammar school open night in Belfast last night. His job was to offer any kind of assistance to P7 parents. On offering assistance to a besuited gentleman, my son was told to go away. Now, coming from a working-class background, my first temptation would be to fix my fist firmly in that man's cranium. But I'm older. I'm trying to understand before rushing to a physical solution. Maybe you could shed light on this man's behaviour towards my son. Well, you see, this is what... Your son has come across an example of what he will expect in future life. He's met an ignorant gulpin. Who's on the line, did you say? Two, Jan. (laughs) Is that so hard? Good morning, Jan. How are you? Good morning, Jerry. Jerry, I just have to say... I hope that woman gets her wee dog anyway, for starters. Me too. But I just have to say to you that record, that the, whatever you were playing at tune there, it was pathetic. It was the biggest load of old sugar I ever heard of. Which one was that, I wonder? That was that stupid one. Which stupid one was that? There's, nearly all of them are stupid. Which Dancing one? in the dark, was it? No, but that was, that was a, 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 a peon, I suppose you could call it. Oh, that dear, was it was from the 80s. Should have peed on it. <laughs> 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 well, I'll pee on it after 12. <laughs> happy you like. Make you happy. <laughs> no, it's not everybody's cup of tea. But you see, a lot of the music on this program is not everybody's cup oh, of tea. Yeah, that yeah, was pathetic. <laughs> deliberately so. All right, then, go away now. I'm going away now. <laughs> Thank you. Oh. Bye. Thanks for that, Sean. It was worthwhile Hello, getting well, that call. Here. Patricia's on one. Great show yesterday, kid. A great show which sadly went unnoticed in Clutter when a camel convey of aid from the Sudan arrived in the town square. Soon the residents of Clocher were arrayed in long white night dresses and Arab headgear. St. Judas Street looked like an old bazaar in Cairo. Unfortunately, Rosie Ryan, Mrs. Havisham of Clocher, arrived too late and had to make do with sheep herders smock and a pair of slippers with turned-up toes, kindly donated by the ladies in the harem of the court of King Caractacus. Rosie turned the air blue and stomped off, stomped off home with the toes of her slippers staring at her big red face. What a hylian, said Father Goodman, as he leapt on a camel and galloped down the street shooting at his congregation with an imaginary Colt forty-five. Tommy, my cat, opened the last forever rocher of the year, popped it in his mouth and said, I hold Mrs. Brown in the greatest esteem. There she is, a decent Christian woman trying to bring her boys up in a world of depravity and debauchery. I give the thumbs up to Matt Baggett, 
who was wrestling with a runaway circus clown in the middle of the street, and I said, it's always a sign of early spring when the clowns run away from the circus in January. But getting back to Mrs Brown and her boys, that programme would never have been commissioned by RTE when the Celtic Tiger was cock of the walk and tall buildings were springing up like Lego sets. I demand enlightenment, cried Tommy. Please clarify in a transparent way the reason behind your outrageous statement. I climbed on a Queen Anne computer desk, manoeuvred my gob up and down from side to side to produce oratory. Southern Ireland, I proclaimed, is going through hard times. The country is broken in debt to the eyes. The Celtic Tiger's gone. Slattery's goat has been restored to power. When a country is down, the first thing that people do is return to their roots. Ireland has returned to bog holes, famine, emigration, donkeys, and the entertainment of long ago. Ireland's answer to Jim Reeves. Mrs Brown's boys tick all the boxes. It shows the Irish to be buck stupid and lacking the thinnest veneer of sophistication. Mrs Brown's a throwback to Take the Floor, the Kennedys of Castle Rock, and Walton's music. If you do feel like singing, do sing an Irish song. When the Celtic Tiger was in its prime, I yelled, Mrs Brown, boys would have been laughed out of RTE, but now that's what the people want. A man dressed as a woman acting the fool and the English love it. They love it. Mrs Brown confirms all their stereotypical prejudices. How lucky we are, cried Tommy. We live in Ulster, where comedy is cutting edge, new and exciting. Right on, brother. Let's put on that DVD of May McFetridge, William Caulfield and Sketchy. Oh, the sky, it was orange. The trees, they were bare. There were oceans of people all going somewhere. It was just like a painting, a day at the fair. The day I saw Bo Diddley in Washington Square. There were heroes and villains, paupers and thieves. There were preachers from TV who rolled up their sleeves. There was much dirty laundry in need of repair. The day I saw Bo Diddley in Washington Square. Dancing in the Dark was sung by Harry M. Woods. There were hipsters and pop stars and posers galore. The kind of location politicians adore and the blind man was laughing asleep on the stair the day i saw Bo Diddley in washington square singing lay down lay down na 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 singing lay down with me he sang a song Salvation Army was lost in a fog As the emperor of ice cream was walking his dog And the members of Congress were chained to a chair The day I saw Bo Diddley in Washington Square There were orphans and outcasts for whom there were runaway children on a park bench somewhere. There were divas from uptown with nothing to wear. The day I saw Bo Diddley in Washington Square. Singing, lay down, lay down, na na na. Singing, lay down with me. He sang a song. Pipes were playing a mystical tune. The sky poured open, the stars in the moon. And the arms of the infants were raised in the air. The day I saw Bo Diddley in Washington Square. As the full moon ascended, it's heavenly stare Two lovers embracing We're caught in the glare 
There are millions of people who'll say they were there the day I saw Bo Diddley in Washington Square. Uh, that's Willie Nile. It's, it's not Harry M. Morris at all. Who was not it singing Dancing in the Dark? It's Jim, it? Jim Eldon. We were to talk to Patricia. Jim Eldon. Jim Eldon, who had all that, Patricia had all that information, but you hadn't time to talk to her. Neither of you.